Hey guys, Sean Holsinger here from Holsinger's Fly Shop, bringing you another video today. Today I'm tying a nymph video, uh, another caddis pattern. I tie a lot of caddis because we have a lot of caddis in my area. Um, I'm always, when I, I have like 300 YouTube videos out there now on fly tying, so I'm constantly searching for new content on the internet. And this is one of those flies that I found. This is the Rock Candy Caddis, and uh, I'm not sure who tied it originally. I just saw a picture. I I just googled a caddis fly and I saw this one and I thought, man, that's a great looking pattern. I didn't really do any research, research on it, sorry, um, as to who invented it or anything like that. I just thought, man, it's a great looking pattern. I'm going to tie some for myself and I may as well share the video with you. Uh, you know, I can look at a fly and pretty much judge what I need for it and it's probably not what the original pattern called for, but it looks exactly the same. And uh, I'm sure it's going to fish the same. It looks great. So here it is in the vise, guys. Uh, I suggest that I'm going to show you a picture of it and then the material is to tie it, I should say. But mess around. Try things like that. Look at the videos or look at um, pictures on the websites of different flies. Figure out what it is. That's part of the fun for me is trying to figure out what flies are, how to tie them with, you know, with, on my own. That's how I learned. Yeah, that's how I become a better tire. So mess around like that. It's a lot of fun and it makes you a better tire. So like I said, here's the picture of the material list to tie it. Okay guys, here's the fly in the vise, a uh, great looking fly, easy to tie. Let's get into tying it now. For a hook, we're going to start this out with a fire hole 316. This is a nice nymph emerger hook, it's got a nice curve to it, great for a caddis pattern. So it's a fire hole 316, this is a size 12, which isn't overly big. The bead on it is a 3mm fire hole black nickel bead. And uh, just push that up the front. The first thing then we're going to put on is some thread. For thread, we're going to use 140 denier fluorescent yellow. And this is going to be an underbody here. Um, the, sh the thread that's going to be on top is a body quill thread, which is real nice, but it's really hard to work with. It's, it breaks easily. I don't want to build up a lot with it. I'll build up with something else and come in and finish with this. So now we got this on. We're going to put a piece of flex floss on. And this is going to be our ribbing. The flex floss is Olive Keller. I'm just going to pull one off of my strand here. And we're going to tie it down right up by the bead. So trim that off. And then we're going to tie it right behind a bead. Oops, popped out there. And then I'm going to stretch it and I'm going to pull it real tight and wind it back around the bend of the curve. Okay, once I get it back there where I want it, I'm just going to cover this up and I'm going to build a taper with this thread. It's easier to build it up with this thread than it is your body quill because the body quill just isn't as strong and it'll break easier. But it's a nice keller. That's the thing I like about the body quill is the keller of it. It works for this fly real great. Once I got that nice and built up there, I'm just going to half hitch it off. And then I'm going to come in with my body quill. Alright, next thing I'm going to put on is my chartreuse uh, body quill, Vivas body quill. And you want to watch how hard you pull on this stuff. It's pretty light and fragile. Uh, I guess that's the word you would use with thread. If you pull too hard, you're going to break it. And so what I'm going to do is I just want to cover up the whole entire thread with this, the whole entire thread underbody with this, and change the color on it to this body quill color, which is just a different color green, but it's more of an insect color than the chartreuse, but it's still bright and flashy enough. So there we go, we got that all covered up. Now I'm going to come up here, 
and you could either whip finish, tie it off with your thread, you can even do a half hitch here, so whoops. Let's let's do a quick whip finish. I just half hitched the the eye there. We don't want that. There we go. Okay. That's good. Now we're gonna put our other thread back on to finish the pro to finish the fly off. So we're just gonna make a couple wraps there with our chartreuse fluorescent chartreuse thread. Cut the tag off, and now we're gonna rib this fly. And I'm gonna pull real tight on it and make like one wrap before I hit the body here. And then I'm just gonna space this out nice and even. Get nice wraps up through here. Make a nice segmented body, and that thing looks awesome. So we're gonna tie this off. About three good tight wraps there. We'll trim that. Then the last thing I like to do is use a little SLF squirrel dub here. I like the black color for this, and it matches that. Uh, black nickel bead real well but I do not use very much and I'm talking a very minimal amount okay and we're just gonna set that aside for a second I'm gonna take my bodkin and I'm just gonna rub the thread here to spread it out and then I'm gonna stick my needle down in between the thread and split the thread so you can see the two sp split threads there there you can see it better and I'm just going to slide that little bit of dubbing in between, close it up, and then put a counterclockwise, I guess it would be clockwise spin on it. And wrap that up. And you see there now I got a nice little dubbing loop with just a little bit of uh, dubbing sticking out of it. Works perfect right there. And then I'm going to make two small whip finishes. I usually make about a three wrap whip finish and then another three wrap whip finish. And that gives me a nice little hot spot color but not overpowering. So there you can see. That looks very nice and it was very easy to tie. So there's your uh, Rock Candy Caddis. That's an easy one to tie and it looks super great. Alright guys, I hope you like that pattern as much as I do. I'm going to have a big line of them in my box for this spring because caddis do well in our area. So, And I love the color of it. I like green. I fish a lot of greens and, and this is a great pattern. So, it, you know, it's like a lot of other caddis patterns out there. It's nothing special, nothing new or, you know, I didn't reinvent the wheel here or whoever tied it didn't reinvent the wheel here, I should say. Um, just a simple caddis pattern so give it a try and ha have fun tying that's what tying is all about experiment with different things learn you know increase in your knowledge in tying so have fun and that's you know any of the material as always you need it i started putting a list of the materials down below in the description and uh, any questions on how to fish these flies or you know anything you have fly tying related you can email me personally at holsingersflyshop at gmail.com or you could email the shop to it, contact us at holsingersflyshop.com. So either way, it'll get to us and uh, we'll answer your questions and we enjoy bringing these to you and we thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, you know, let me know what else you'd like to see coming up here in the, in the near future. So. Until next week when I bring you another video, thanks for watching everybody. I'm Sean Holsinger.